start looking at where we are going. And with that hope and with that promise, we will handle our present situations in a different way. The way we endure and go through, we hold on and we faint not because we know what we'll be giving up. But a lot of people don't know what they'll be losing. And I'm not going to just talk about what heaven may look like. I need to talk about what we need to do in order to get there. Amen? Amen. And we started off last week, and I just want to remind us of our base scripture. So I'm going to ask you to stand, and we're going to read it again this morning. If you can, let's stand if you can. And our scripture is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 and 18. Let's read together. That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. Father, speak your servants here in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Can you go back one slide for me, please, Aaron? Remember last week we talked about, well, we talked about a lot of things. I hope, I hope you all took it in. Amen? It was set in the foundation. But I want to point out again, we fight this good fight because we have an understanding of what we are fighting for. Remember us talking about that? When you understand the reason why you are fighting, then that motivates you to fight. When you understand what the enemy is trying to take from you, you won't let him get it so easy. You won't let him dis deter you. And not only that, Jesus says, in this world, we're going to have troubles and tribulations. But he has overcome the world. So our hope should be in him. But we need to understand that when we talk about our bodies dying and decaying, it's not just the physical death. Remember we talked about the Bible says we should die daily, kill this flesh, our selfishness. Because in doing that, we gain something. Because when we kill the flesh and we grow in Christ and mature in him, the Holy Spirit becomes stronger in our lives. And as he becomes stronger, he produced fruit. And remember we said what the fruit was. Galatians chapter 25, verse 22. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, patience, and all the rest. Amen? Amen? When you die to self, you gain the fruit of the Spirit. And this is what the Scripture is talking about. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. But you always hear me say, we do ourselves an injustice when we don't grow in God's word. And those of us that have a full understanding, this fight to kill the flesh and our bodies dying that ain't nothing to, to worry about, you know. We need to lose that because in losing that, we're actually gaining something. But we need to understand what we're gaining. Then we'll want to lose some stuff. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
but it's all in the understanding. God prepared us over the last year by saying, change the way you what? Because when you change the way you think, you change who you are. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. And we're talking about this because we need to start thinking in terms of eternity. Too many people forget about eternity. Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. He has a place prepared for his sons and his daughters. So as we grow old and we mature in God's word, heaven starts to look real good. And I just want to talk about some things to bring it to your attention this morning. Because as things over on this side starts to decay and, and life starts to come in and you see what's going on in the world today. I mean, the political situation is sickening. Heaven is starting to look a little better. <laughs> Amen? Over there is starting to look a lot better than over here. And if you don't believe me, then just start reading the word. Read about what God has promised to us. Amen? Amen? And we're talking about this because we need to have an understanding. Remember, we read the, the, the verse that says, this earthly vessel of clay has treasure in it. The treasure of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Family, that's treasure. Because when you know that you know that you know, <laughs> Then all of this, it don't matter. And everything that seemed to be so important, you start loosening your grip. Because you're not setting up treasures on this earth. You're setting treasures up. See, you got to understand. Because mind you, the Bible admonishes us to do that, you know. Don't set up the treasures down here. But we get i getting a little ahead of myself. But these earthly vessels have treasure in them. But when you understand that, even though you may be knocked down, you realize that you're not knocked out. Amen? And the Bible tells us that. We persevere because our gospel is one of not avoidance, but overcoming. So we go through stuff because we are heading towards our eyes is on a prize. Amen. Don't let these present troubles make you forget the reward and the prize. Amen. I remember, and I brought this up before, I don't know which Olympics it was, but there was an Olympics where a guy tripped and fell. Y'all remember this? He was running and he tripped and fell. <clears throat> and he hurt himself. And all the people, you know, the people they have on the field, the attendants and all of them, they ran to him. And he said, no, 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 leave me alone. Leave me alone. Because when they interviewed him afterwards, he says, I practiced for years, years to run this race. And I wasn't about to let a trip and a fall stop me from reaching the finish line. Amen. And he started to limp like the last 300 meters. And the whole place was in an uproar. They stopped all the events because it was too loud. The people were just cheering him on because he refused to give up because his eye was on the finish line. 
and he wasn't prepared to let a situation that he found himself in stop him for the very thing that he was practicing for, for years. Isn't that something? Even though he didn't get the gold medal, he went across the finish line. And when he got up to about the 200 meters, his father came out of the stands and walked with him around to finish it off. You remember that? That's right. And they always said that is what the Olympic spirit is all about. Completion. There's something about completion. But the enemy of this world, he don't want you to see the end. Right. He wanted you to take your eyes off of that. Because he know no matter what he throw at you, if your focus is right, you take it. Because you've already made up in your mind, no matter what come, come with me. My eyes on the prize. And when you read scriptures like this, this, this is a joke. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long. We're talking last compared to eternity. You think 50, 60, 70 years is a long time? Look up the definition of eternity. It says forever. That ain't no number. Anytime you could put a number to it, it's too short compared to eternity. I don't care if you put a million. That's a number. Now, when you can't figure out the number, now you talking about eternity. That's what the enemy wants us to, to take our eyes off. We fight because we know what we're fighting for. And we have the truth of Jesus Christ. Now, we ended last week, week with verse 16. Remember? And I said, verse 16 says, that is why we never give up. You don't let no situation make you give up. It ain't worth eternity. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. The outward man perishes, but the inward man is being renewed day by day by the Spirit of God. But in this verse is a familiar struggle. The flesh and the spirit. The body and the soul. We need to understand this matter of the flesh and the spirit. We talked about dying daily to self. And remember, we also read a scripture that we have new bodies waiting us. Remember? Amen. See, that is why you need to read the word. Then you're not so concerned about this one. In the Corinthian thinking, the mortal flesh was evil and had to be destroyed. That is why dying is in the text. A better word would be decaying. Our physical bodies are decaying. You see, in Adam, we were deconstructed, so to speak, because of sin. But in Jesus Christ, we are reconstructed. You all hearing me? Amen. And we got to understand this. A French philosopher by the name of Pierre de Cardin is quoted saying, we are not a natural being experiencing a spiritual experience, but we are spiritual beings experiencing a natural experience. We are spirit. Don't let the enemy think that this is it. The second you were created, you were a spirit. 
and spirits never die. Don't lose sight of that. It's important. Because we choose where our spirits spend eternity. Are you all hearing me? Serious stuff, people. You are eternal. The question is where you can spend eternity. There's no separation, really, between your soul and your body. You know why I say that? Because my soul and my body have been redeemed in Jesus Christ. And that is why Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 53 and 54, for our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. Then when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, this scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. Other version says when this mortal takes on immortality. And that's going to happen. Because another scripture says, the dead in Christ shall, raise, shall rise first. Amen? Amen? Before the judgment. This mortal will put on immortality. So I'm just not going to leave my body in the grave. And remember, the dead in Christ shall rise. But I'm going to have a resurrected body which is going to be reconstructed and different from the sinful body. Won't have a sinful nature. Because in Christ, our bodies are going to be new. Reconstructed bodies. So Paul, when he's talking about decaying, he's not just talking about flesh decaying. He's talking about mortal decay. Are you all understand what I'm saying? Because your spirit is going to live forever. But you can't call real life a spirit living in eternal torment. I wouldn't call that real living, would you? <laughs> huh? You're alive, but I ain't sure you're living. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> And that is why we don't give up. We don't want this mortal failure. But you know, sometimes this world, and I, and I, I want to say some things to bring us to a place. How many people here read Ecclesiastes? Let me tell you something. You need to read the book. You won't come to a place of reality of what's going on. Read Ecclesiastes. He's drop it like at heart. Yeah. I'm serious. You know, we do ourselves an injustice when we don't read God's word. The reality of life itself is right there. And then you wonder what you're fighting for. Look at what you're fighting for. Instead of you fight for eternal life, you're fighting for these mortal things. We're going anyhow. This world sometimes causes us to get lonesome for another place. Maybe it's just me. The older I get, the looser I hold on to things. I'm loosening my grip, family. That is why, like I said last week, this is one of the scriptures, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I live in. I live there. And I understand it's easy to talk this way. And sometimes it's difficult for people to understand because they've never really had anything taken away from them. Sometimes until real sickness hits your body, you don't see things quite the way they really are. Because as long as everything is working all right and we up and moving, we think we're in control. 
And we take it for granted. And we don't realize that's how much God loves us. He's given us that much freedom. That's love. To just totally bless you like that. But he wants you to realize, I, you live and move and have your being because of me. That's one of them places where we are so, we are so into the blessing, which is us, and we forget the blesser. But you know, on this side of my sickness, when I was sick, I saw things a certain way. On this side, where I am now with my sickness, I see things another way. I have had things on this side of my sickness taken away from me. And I realized a lot of stuff. I ain't as much control as I thought I was. Because <laughs> my body started doing things, and I couldn't fix it. I couldn't readjust it. It was out of my control. And even when the doctors were working on me, on, on me I had to pray that God give them the wisdom to know what to do with me. The things that I learned about medication and how they only could try to get it as close as possible to work for me. That when I lose organs in my body, nothing that they could do from outward could ever do what the body was designed to do. Are you all hearing me? <laughs> but sometimes when you don't get to that place and realize that, you think you do the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> that is how we take God for granted, you know. The same way, and I know the parents will agree with me, the same way your children take you for granted. Because you treat them so good and give them everything they want the kind of appreciation that you think that you would receive, you don't always get. But you love them so much, you make their life easy. Because you want to bless them that way. Amen? But it's not always received that way. And you have to concentrate to be appreciative. Because when things come easy, it's easy not to be as appreciative as you should be. It's a human condition. Amen? But I understand that. So on this side, now I'm a lot better. I've come through a heavy period. I see things a lot differently. Things got put in perspective real quick you begin to understand what's really important. Amen? And I say that because as you get older and you mature in your walk with God, you begin to understand the things of this world, you start to let them go because you begin to see you're moving on. Are you all hearing me this morning? Yeah. It brings you to a real place. And I want to say something to you parents, to just to let you know this is how real it is. As parents, you have to get to a place where you talk to your children, you sit your son or your daughter down, and you say to them, I've done all the reasoning I can do. All I can do for you now is pray for you. I have put my values in you. I've brought you to church. I've tried to teach you right from wrong. But now you're on your own. The decisions that you're going to make are going to be yours. I love you, 
and I'm always praying for you. I get on my knees and I pray for you. But I can't make you do anything. I will continue to pray for you, but I'm turning you loose. That's how serious getting ready for heaven is, even with your own children. Because if you hold on to them and a lot of the problems that they're going to drag you through, you will lose focus on heaven. Trying to fix a situation you can't fix. Are you all hearing me? That's how serious it is. God bless you with them, made you care for them. That's why the Bible says, teach a child even the way he should go, because when he get old, he won't get, at least you give them the opportunity to come back, even though they go their own way. By teaching them about God, you give them that, at least you let them know there is hope, if they ever find themselves in a hopeless place. Amen. It's not the end. But, you can't be on their back staring their life every step of the way. And if you take that on, you will lose your place. And you ain't going to be ready. It's heavy. But it's real. I'm saying this because it's like stuff. The things you drive, the clothes you wear, that house you live in, it's not that important when it, comes to, when it compares to eternity. You have to start letting these things go. It's not only physical things, it's people too. <laughs> you know something, we got to get real with this. You know, If we're going to walk in this, we need to walk in this because that's God's best for us. And it has nothing to do with love. Because you love them. God will love us right into the gates of hell. Right. He love us. But we still make the choices. <laughs> Our choices ain't got nothing to do with his love. Because any day we decide to turn around, he will love us back into his arms. Parents is the same way. You love your children. <clears throat> but you got to let them go. <laughs> You all hearing me? You do your best for them. He does his best for us, but we still make decisions. And if you hold on things too tight, you can lose. That includes your very own children. I hope I'm, y'all I'm, y'all understand what I'm saying because I'm not telling you don't love your children. You know, you all get that right. Please don't run from here and say, Pastor, say don't love your children. Because that ain't what I'm saying. But like your car, like the clothes you wear, like money, you ain't taking none of these things with you, including your children. And the day can come when the bread can leave your body. And then what? When you stand before God, would you say, well, I spent all my time with my son because you know he need my help and I was trying. <laughs> but what about you? What about you? Compared to where you're going, it's not important. You can't take it with you. Family, let me tell you something. We read the scripture. If you can see it, Hear me now. If you can see it with your eyes, it's temporal. Can we just read the scripture? If you can touch it, it's temporal. It is going away. Now that's a dose of reality, yeah? Huh? <laughs> Go back to the very first scripture, please, Aaron. Go to the next scripture. So we don't look at the troubles we have. 
we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone. But the things we cannot see will last forever. And that's the word. If you don't believe me, look up 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. If you could put your hand on it, it has temporary written all over it. <laughs> you all hear me? The things you wear, the cars you drive, the houses you live in. Family, start loosening your grip. Money, clothes, cars, friends. Hold them with a loose grip. Because they'll be here today and you won't be able to find them tomorrow. You know something? After a while, let me, let, 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 let's get real. After a while, all the people that you were raised with, they start leaving you. And trust me, if it ain't happened yet, live a little bit longer. Wait a little bit longer. Your mother, your father, they're not here no more. They're gone. Brothers, sisters, gone. And when you are the last one in your family, this world is not as attractive as it used to be. Just ask anybody who's lonely. The things they used to enjoy, the people they used to enjoy it with, it ain't the same no more. And we fighting to stay here. <laughs> I don't know about you, but when you understand all of that over there, start looking a lot better than here. People start losing people in their lives and start getting old. They start saying, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Are you all hearing me? This is our reality. But it's a good thing when you're ready to move on to a better place. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Ain't no shame in that, but that's a real place. My mother used to bake bread. My mother's deceased now. So is my father. But my mother used to bake bread, and I used to love my mother bread. And as far as I'm concerned, and take this in love, yeah. nobody could bake bread like my mother. Right. So bread to me don't even have the same value it used to have. I try to bring you all to a place to understand what I'm trying to say. Things start changing, and it's not the same. And even though we miss all of that. We like to get that back. Somehow we want to fight to stay here. <laughs> Even though everything's changing. After my parents died, every time I walk into the home there, back to the home where I was born and where they used to, it don't have the same feel. It don't even smell the same. And I miss that. Not that I don't miss people that I have in my life now. I do. But the people that I used to enjoy, they're no longer here. I can't enjoy those times with them anymore because they have moved on. And when things like that start to happen, heaven starts to look good. Because a lot of the people who have moved on, I'm ready to go see them again. Ecclesiastes gives us an understanding of the value and the worthlessness of things. And that it's all senseless. 
meaningless. And we put so much meaning to it and fighting to hold on to stuff that are temporal. And no matter how hard you fight, it's going to go anyhow. That is why you need to loosen your grip. Enjoy what you can for as long as you can. But don't be so depressed that you can't function and move on when you ain't got it no more. Am I making any sense? And these are the things we need to be thinking about when stuff over here starts changing and over there starts looking a bit better. But the reason why over there don't look better to us is because we don't know what over there look like. We don't even know what we're we holding on, fighting over here to stay, and what keep what we missing? We don't even hear about heaven. Huh? Jesus came so we didn't have to stay in a broken place and miss eternity with God, a special place that God had designed for us to be in his presence constantly. No sickness. Amen. That selfish spirit, nowhere to be seen. Just experiencing the unfailing love of God constantly. Pure, unadulterated love. We don't even know what that feels like because we were born in a sinful place. And only through Jesus and the Holy Spirit working in our lives, we could even control some of them nasty passions we got. And we can't take that up there with God. So he's given us some principles to live by while we're here. But the prize is to go back there and be that perfect human being or that perfect spirit that we were created to be. Not making any sense to y'all. But we don't think about that. We get bogged down in the situations here. And then Satan, he know how to throw billboards up. Oh, this is good. I was just tell I was just telling somebody. I said, it is so ridiculous. We do stuff and we don't even understand. We are so driven. It's ridiculous. But that's the sin nature. Because I remember I would get drunk, throw up on myself, falling all down all over the street. As soon as I sleep off a little bit, I go and do it again. Now, don't ask me why, please, because <laughs> I can't even understand. That. It's so stupid. But those are the kind of things we do. You understand what I'm saying? It's almost like we're suckers for punishment. We do it in relationships. Go in this relationship and get messed up and as soon as you drag yourself out, you just barely get out. Then another one walk past you and you say, hmm. Ready to jump back in again as if that beating wasn't enough. Do you all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. We go through this cycle. But this is what we fighting to stay in, rather than fight to go to a better place. Oh, y'all ain't getting me. Y'all ain't. <laughs> y'all understand what I'm saying? We fighting for the wrong things. <laughs> the problem is, when you don't know what you're fighting for, you don't fight. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Unless we fully understand the reality of this too shall pass, we ain't gonna make it. It don't matter what you're going through. And we live in a sinful and a broken world, so we can go through stuff. But the stuff shouldn't deter us 
from the prize. Because the question you need to ask yourself is, when you get so upset and discouraged and you want to walk away from a promise that God made to you, you have to ask yourself the question, then what? Huh? <laughs> I'd rather limp into heaven than not get there at all. Foot, I will drag you. Are you all hearing me? <laughs> oh, Lord, help us. Over there, it's starting to look better than over here. That's what we're dealing with. I get tired of people lying on me and dragging my name through the mud, trying to pull me down. I get tired of the negativity in the world. Every time I turn on the TV and see what's happening in politics, it makes you sick. The violence in our young people, old people too. Every time you turn around, somebody getting shoot. The shootings. Trust is becoming a thing of the past. You can work hard, educate yourself, go on a job to better yourself and your co-workers will try and drag you down for no other reason than they don't want you to, to excel. That's all. They just don't want to see you get nothing. When you start seeing all of this over there, start looking a lot better than here. <laughs> Amen? Heaven, if you know about heaven, if you know about eternity, when all of these things start happening, it starts looking pretty good. You see, in this body, I could say there's a leak. It ain't like it used to be. And stuff is slowly draining out. The body is decaying. And you got to understand, it don't matter how much dye you put in your hair. I don't care how much false teeth you wear. I don't care where you tuck and where you pull and all of that. Eventually, you could exercise yourself to death. Eat all the right foods. Keep all your doctor's appointments. Still, one day, your eyesight can grow dim. And you will be 80 years old, and your body look like it's 36, and you're going blind. Are you all hearing me? This is our reality. And you will fight, fight, fight to stay here. <laughs> because how you look is more important to you than thanking God for the life that he gave you. And now you're ready to go with, make, be with your maker. And I ain't telling nobody is go lay down and die. I'm just telling you, the way you prepare yourself and get ready to move on, this earth don't hold you back. Do you understand what I'm saying? I have heard the horror stories of people, they know they're dying and they're screaming and hollering like they could hold on to life. And they die badly because they're not ready to move on. I hope when we get to that place, that we are in such a place with God that we look forward to being with him. If you want to be honest with me, sometimes, and I know I'm not the only one, and I ain't 60 yet, or close, but I ain't 60 yet. 
But there are mornings I get up, I got to sit on the edge of the bed. I remember when I could have just jumped right up and walk away. I, I, don't laugh. <laughs> I got to sit on the edge of the bed and get the juices going, you know what I mean? It's like, I ain't ready to stand up yet. <laughs> I got to work into it. It's saying to me, things changing. <laughs> Are you all hearing me, people? Stuff don't work like it used to no more. <laughs> and what are we fighting for? To stay in that condition? Are you all understanding what I'm saying? And I'm not saying this. Life is good. And live it as long as you can. But have the right attitude about it. It can't be the most important thing, even above spending eternity with God. All of us were to the place where there was a time in our lives when if somebody tell us something, we could just tell ourselves, oh, I remember that. <laughs> now you got to write stuff down. <laughs> then you got to remember that you write it down. <laughs> then you got to remember where it is. <laughs> and even when you find a note, you say, what I wrote this for? <laughs> 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 huh? <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is stuff is changing. And when stuff start changing, over there start looking better than here. Do you all understand what I'm saying? This is real. But the only thing is, we got to hear about over there. We ain't hearing about over there. Nobody ain't preparing it. You don't hear about heaven. Because everybody trying to make this heaven. And when you make this heaven, you're in trouble. Because now you ain't got no place to go. Because as far as you're concerned, this is it. Amen? I'm saying all of this because I want us to see we need to put the fight in the right place. Because we're fighting for life on earth, even with all its struggles. because we're making that the most important thing. But our reality is we're gonna have struggles and situations in our individual lives. But because we know Jesus as Savior, and we know that there is an eternity waiting on us, the situations we find ourselves in, that is what we fight to go through, to make it to heaven. We handle our situations in such a, in such a way that we're not hopeless. And it's not like we're setting up treasures here on earth because our treasure's in heaven. But when we find ourselves in difficult situations, our attitude is eternal. So we handle those situations differently. Do you all understand what I'm saying? Yes. That's the fight. To hold on to the treasure of knowing that you are saved eternally. And these troubles you go through are small compared to what God has in store for you. <laughs> Do you all hear what I'm saying? We just need to put the fight in the right place instead of fighting to stay here. We need to fight to go through the situations while we're here to get there. Are you making any sense? That is why we're opening our eyes to this. We don't look at the stuff we see now. There's something we can't see that we have hope in that we're looking forward to. So these things that we find ourselves going through here, they're a joke. We walk through this like nothing because we know this is not it. And at the end of the day, all that we go through here we have a house not made with hands waiting on us. And unless you hear it, you won't even look forward to it. And then when you find yourself in a difficult situation, 
you can smile and say, this too shall pass. With Christ in the vessel, you can smile at the storm. Because you know who you got on board. Our reality is we're not going to be here forever. And we need to strengthen our spirit man to overcome the flesh, to live the best way possible on this earth, but we will be prepared for the next step. When this body give up, and it will, our spirits are ready to move on. I'm going to end there this week. And I, I'm going to have to do a part three to this. But I want to I wanna finish with a secret that's in the text. That if you get a hold on it, and I will expound on this in the next portion. If you get a hold of it, You'll start shouting now. I know people look at me like I'm crazy because I ain't got nothing, but I just act like I got all kinds of things. <laughs> and it's only because I know I am so blessed. God has spared my life. I thank God for life, and I'm going to enjoy life as much as I can and in the best way possible. But I know this is not it for me. And that's why I don't worry about what I don't have because I enjoy what I do have. You understand what I'm saying? If he want me to have it, he let me have it. If I don't have it, then I don't need it. And I don't worry about it. Amen. And I'm going to have that attitude. Because I'm going to enjoy this, and I'm looking forward to that. Amen? Amen? Amen. And I'm going to have that attitude. And that's why the little that I have, I'm not going to have such an expectation that this ain't good enough. No. And can't enjoy it, because I'm looking for something that I don't have, and then that consumes me right. to try and get it. And the Bible says when we try to get things that we can't have, it, make, it takes us into sin. Because sometimes you do things that you ain't supposed to do to try and get it. And one of the first things that you do is your mindset. You make that idolatry. It becomes a God. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And you got to be careful of that way of thinking. Because it's the thinking that can carry your face. Everything comes from a thought. Everything, every action, every invention, it comes from here. This way it starts. We, we think it, then we create it. But if you get this, if it makes sense to you, whatever comes your way, you'll shout. In the midst of adversity, if you can get a handle on verse 17, and verse 18. But especially 17. Go to verse 17. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. You all hear that? But you got to get it. And we can talk about that next time. For our present troubles are small. And won't last very long. Small compared to what's to come. And won't last very long compared to eternity. Yet they produce for us. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. Oh, we can talk about that. Because this can knock your socks off. You hear me? This can bless you. This is going to bless you because Jesus, let me tell you the kind of God we serve. He knows this is a broken place. Because Satan is the king of, this king, of, king of this world. He sent him down here. He kicked him out of heaven. 
This way he came. <laughs> Amen? But having us here ain't no mistake. But his creation he loves so much that he has given us the tools how to live in Satan's kingdom. Do you all hear what I'm saying? And not only that, there are certain things that cannot be stopped while you're here. But he wants us to understand it don't matter the stuff that you go through while you're here. Because it's a joke to what I got for you when you get up here. Do you understand what I'm saying? And we can talk about that. Because it's understanding that brings us to a place where we live better. Amen? Amen? Let's stand to our feet. I hope you know that God loves you. And that is why he's bringing you to a place of understanding. He prepared us by taking us down the road to what? Change the way we think first. Now he's given us all these things and we have to look at them in a different way. Because at one point, trials and tribulations, people think, come to kill you. But trials and tribulations don't always come to kill you. Trials and tribulations, a lot of times, come to take you to a place that you need to be. And if you don't go through certain things, you're not prepared. Amen? What's the sense of giving you something you can't handle it because you ain't prepared? What kind of God would he be? Amen? You don't put car keys in a 12-year-old hand. And a car is a good thing. But in the hand of a 12-year-old, it's not the right thing. So the 12-year-old got to go through some stuff. Now, when he's ready, that very same blessing can be given to him at the right time. But he definitely has to go through some stuff before he get it. Amen? <laughs> it's the same with us. It's the same with us. I hope that something that I said this morning, y'all could take it and apply it to your life. Because our reality is we are decaying. We are going to leave this place. But are you ready? Are you looking forward to the next step? And we should be. Because we're calling ourselves Christians. We're calling ourselves followers of Christ. Well, the ultimate place that we can meet Christ ain't going to be here. And are we really, really looking forward to that? And we can talk about that too. Amen? If you know Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sin, everybody.